Now I'm sure all my subscribers are familiar with Dr. A. Truat, the same Dr. Truat that first introduced the world to Joseph Moshe, the Israeli Mossad microbiologist that called in the Dr. Truat show and claimed that the Baxter Laboratories were actually planning to intentionally contaminate the swine flu vaccines. Now I didn't actually come across this article till yesterday, but it was written in August. And in this article, Dr. Truat's telling us about three software programs, Daylight, Oracle 8, and Promise. And these programs are used to analyze the sequences of viruses, and then they could predict how that virus is going to mutate in the future. Or they could even take a virus and then be able to go backwards and using reverse engineering they could tell how the virus used to be so I'm gonna just read a little bit from this article Oracle AI not only has the ability to rapidly analyze gene clad sequencing in viruses and bacteria in mere minutes it can build a model of a complex new viral structure just as quickly and can calculate to the minutest detail as possible drift of mutations after the release this software can not only predict the death toll that the virus would produce, but also the accurate final numbers of its genetic mutations over a given period of time. In short, this software can control a complex genocide agenda in the form of an engineered worldwide viral pandemic from beginning to end, Alpha to Omega. Evidence suggests that this agenda was indeed systematically set in motion of March 2009. Now it's important to realize that Oracle AI is really only the backbone behind this database and server that's used for predicting the future mutations, the sequences from hypothetical and real viruses that are in the system. And Oracle needs this, this software called Daylight in order to really do its work on this. And here's a press release from the Daylight company. Dr. Truout references it in his article. I double checked it um, to see if it's real. This is this is on the the chemical information network this press release is from July 14 2000 so it's easy to see this technology has been available for quite some time now I'll read the press release daylight chemical information systems Inc today introduces a new addition to the array of daylight software products Descartes an application using the unique extensibility features of Oracle 8i designed to fully integrate the molecular structures and reactions in the Oracle 8i database server environment Use of the Descartes with Oracle 8i server unlocks access of existing Oracle applications and tools to the array of chemical information. And it goes on. Descartes was developed in close collaboration with Novartis scientists and the architects of Oracle 8i's extensibility framework. Okay, so they're claiming that they worked hand in hand with Novartis scientists. You guys might remember Novartis. They're the makers of Pandemrix, the H1N1 vaccine that does contain squalene MF57 and has already caused some deaths. Then it goes on. Daylight Chemical Technology, tightly integrated with the Oracle 8i database, opens a door to groundbreaking informatic solutions. This technology empowers the users to bridge and expand the horizons of chemical information, science, merge biological and chemical data, and provide solutions for data warehousing, compound acquisition, and more. Yeah, much more. Then, a representative from Oracle actually has this to say. The Oracle database is unique in its ability to singularly store, manage, and secure relational data, files, and unstructured data. So he says that no one else other than Oracle would be able to provide the software to do this. Now what's really scary about this whole Oracle thing is that just by coincidence, a couple months ago I came across some information that led me to believe that Oracle Corporation might be implicated in helping to plan and carry out the September 11th attacks. Now you might think this is a little far-fetched, but if you'll just watch this movie that I made a month ago, um, it might make a little better sense. Uh, 
So as you can see, the crater was already in the ground. There was no plane debris, no wreckage, no bodies, nothing. So you can see the evidence and no plane ever crashed, but people say, what about Todd Beamer? The guy who called, you know, Mr. Let's Roll. Well, as we look into it, Todd Beamer and his wife, the week before September 11th, decided to take a trip to Rome and mysteriously paid off their $700,000 mortgage. Furthermore, uh, Lisa Beamer keeps on buying million dollar houses and she sold that one and just bought a $2 million beach house. So how'd she keep on getting this money? You know, everybody says Todd Beamer wouldn't have faked his death because he worked for a successful software company. He was a successful software salesman, but who did he work for? Hmm, the Oracle Corporation. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but you should probably look into it. It's called the Vixen Report. It's made by Hoy Poloi. You can download it on the internet. And in this report, it's 80 pages long, and he completely dissects the list of fake victims. And not only that, but the CNN's memorial and the comments that have been made on the memorial, the fake comments. And there's so many errors in this list, and... There's so many things that are beyond coincidence that proves that many of these victims were never even real people. They're just names to add numbers. So somebody had to create this fake list, this database. Wonder who that could have been. Maybe Oracle. If we look at their history here, it says that the company started as the first commercial database company. Not only that, but they're still number one. Not only are they number one in the commercial database hardware sector, but they're number one in the database software creation sector. So they're the best in the world. And as we look at this article, it says that in 2001, Oracle posted the number of, pe of victims that they had from their company in September 11th on their quarterly earnings report they posted it right next to the numbers to gain sympathy why was that Ooh, they had a 10 percent loss in their software market that quarter so they they wanted to gain sympathy by posting their victims next to it but if todd beamer was lying that means oracle probably knew about it too but as we look at this article here apparently Six members of Oracle died in the World Trade Center attack, other than Todd Beamer. You know, he, he, was in, he wasn't even involved with the World Trade Center attacks. But six of their other employees died. But it's kind of strange because Oracle didn't even have an office in the World Trade Center. According to this, on September 11th, they had scheduled an emergency drill on the 97th floor in conjunction with Fiduciary Trust. Now, this wasn't an emergency drill where they evacuated the, dr the building. It wasn't a fire drill. It's an emergency drill, like something goes wrong with their servers, and they're, it's a drill, like they're fixing it. So they intentionally sent six people into that building to die because they had already made the database. They'd already, really what happened was, that the CIA approached Oracle Corporation to make this database and said, hey, we need, we need somebody who's going to fake their death 
and play Todd Beamer in this deal. Well, Oracle owner talks to Todd Beamer. They get linked up. But then he knows that he could use this situation to his advantage because he knows about it in, in advance. So what does he do? He sends six of his people up into the 97th floor of the World Trade Center on September 11th. He flew them across the country to their death. But how do we know that those six people that died on the 97th floor were really real? Well, we only even found out, I only even found out about them because of the emergency calls placed to 911s that were released under the Public Information Act. So, I invite you to go to the CNN database of victims, look up by employers which were from the Oracle company, go Google their names and you'll find out that these were real people.